Hey, welcome back guys, JC here. Uh, the purpose of this video is to try to, not really teach you guys, but show you guys my method of finding out why a certain device is not working. And this can be anything, LEDs, buzzers, uh, no data going to your on-screen display, and much, much more. Anything you connect to the flight controller. In this specific case, a subscriber asked me, uh, he says he has LEDs connected to his Omnibus F4 Pro board and his LEDs are not working. Now I have not found out why they're not working. The only thing I've done so far is wire them in according to the wiring diagram and set LEDs up in Betaflight. That's it. So I don't know if these are going to work or not, but a uh, little spoiler alert, if I do post this video then that means I do get them working. So. It's no surprise to you, but it's still a surprise to me. So let's see what we can do. So step one, verify you have the device connected correctly according to the wiring diagram. And here is the directions for the Omnibus Pro. A lot of you guys say you don't have these directions, so if you want, you can just pause the screen and uh, save this, screenshot it or something. Here is the bottom half of it. Uh, but we see here it says LED strip and then 5 volt then ground. If I look on the back side I do have them wired correctly. So we've got ground, 5 volt, and signal. Now we want to verify to see if they actually don't work. Like I said I already have set them up in Betaflight so if we plug in a USB cable and we're getting nothing. We are getting power to the flight controller so the flight controller isn't bad. The next step is verify that 5 volts are making it to the LED strip because with some flight controllers just the USB will provide 5 volts to all the 5 volt pins or or half and half it will do it for some of them but not some uh, but some flight controllers you have to plug in a LiPo battery uh, to be able to get those 5 volts to the pins so what I will do now is check to make sure we are getting 5 volts with just the USB and yep I am getting 5 volts so at this point we know that the LEDs are wired in correctly, they are set up in Betaflight, and there is power and ground going to the LEDs. So this means one of two things. The LEDs are bad, or the signal wire, something is going on with that. My next step normally would be to verify to make sure my LEDs are good. I would place these on a different flight controller, but I've already done that. I know they're good. So this means there's something going on with the signal wire and that pin. So the next thing I probably normally would do is I drew a little diagram for you guys on some circuits say this is the LED signal pin you can just place a uh, set your multimeter to a continuity mode place one lead on uh, the pin and then you want to run this across all the pins on your processor until you hear a beep but that doesn't always work with some circuits you have stuff in between the processor and that pin so if I were to place one lead on the pin and then run my other lead across all the pins on the processor, I'm not going to hear any beeps at all because you may have something, like I said, in between. So in this case, you would have to place one lead on the pin and then one lead, you would just have to put this on every little thing on your flight controller until you hear a beep. Uh, it could be a capacitor, it could be a diode, it could be anything. So yes. what. So yes, what I'm saying is you would have to place one lead here and then one lead on, and you have to do it on both sides of every little thing, capacitors, resistors, everything, until you hear a beep. And this is very time consuming. My other tip is uh, remove the wire from the pad first because not all multimeters uh, will have enough, I don't know if I can say energy or power, but it's just not going to work. Take my word for it, remove the wires first. Okay, there goes my signal wire. Now I could do this, or option number two is, and this is, uh, it's not cheating, but just because, you know, I have this YouTube channel, I've done this so many times, I know these flight controllers, I know that the Flip32 Omnibus flight controllers have had, uh, like a design flaw as far as their LEDs. The circuitry is kind of messed up. So th think about this, you know those uh, little mazes that you do with a you know on paper and you can do it with a uh, pen if you go if you start at the start line and then you try to go through the maze trying to make it to the center 
uh, that sometimes works, but sometimes you take the wrong path. The cheap way of doing mazes is starting at the end point and then working your way out. I know that's cheating, but hey, I like to work smarter, not harder. So in this case, we're going to start at the end of the maze and work our way out. The other thing that I need to say is, uh, like I said, I know just from personal experience that there's been problems with the uh, these boards. So I know that uh, sometimes they remap the pins if there is something wrong in the circuitry because once they start producing these fly controllers they can't go back and fix it unless they make a new model but what they can do is change the firmware and in the firmware you can remap pins so that's going to be the next thing I check so what I will do is connect a USB cable let's go into beta flight and uh, this is why it, I have not made this video sooner because the way I did it before, the way you had to do it, it was a lot longer, more time consuming. But with the release of Beta Flight 3.1, they have now given us resource commands. So type in resource and also resource list. Now we can't probe our flight controller with the USB connected and power going to it. So what I will do is take all of this and copy it. Then I will open up a notepad, paste it. This way we can unplug our fly controller and probe it all we want and still be able to see all of the pinouts. The next thing I will do is we need the pinouts of the processor. and. Because this is a F4 processor, I will type in STM32F405 datasheet. And if you have an F3 processor, then it's going to be STM32F303 datasheet. And we will come to the website st.com. Uh, here's the datasheet. What we want to do now is scroll down until we find a picture of the pinouts. And there's 202 pages, so this could take some time. There we go. Okay, this picture has 16 pins on each side. This one has 25 pins on each side. This one has 36. This one has 44. Uh, you can just look at your processor and know that it's none of those except for the one with 16 pins per side. The next thing you need to know is if you look at this diagram in the just picture in the top left this is you see the number one right there that's because the pins always start off on the top left and then go down so we see one two three four blah 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 and the way you know the uh, pin number one on your processor is ignore the writing because the writing will screw you over this is not the top what you're looking for is this dot. I know there's two different dots. There's a dot on this corner too, but you're looking for the one that's kind of recessed into it. Not to mention there's also a little arrow right here. So this this one right here is pin number one. So if we look at it according to the picture in the data sheet, this is actually the top. And then we have the right side or left side, right side and bottom. So this is pin number one. Going back to the pinout, in the firmware, we want to find where the LED strips are. And we see here the LED strips are placed on A08. Then going back to this, we want to find A08. But it's not going to be the same thing. Uh, there's going to be a P, which stands for pin, I would assume. And then uh, it's going to be PA8. So there's A3, A5, 6, 7. All right, here we go. PA8. And then if we count down, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's eight pins down on the right side, which is pin 41. I will set my multimeter to the continuity mode, so it will beep whenever we make contact. I will go eight pins down from the right side. So one, two, three, four, one. Holding it down there. Now. What we want to do is, like I said, you can't test the signal pad 
at least for LEDs because I know for a fact that there are components in between so we can't just find uh, continuity between this pin and the LED signal pad it's not going to work you would have to do that method that I showed you earlier on that piece of paper but uh, I'm, I'm cheating because I already know there's a problem with these boards uh, with the circuitry to the LEDs so I know that they have been remapping those pins so I will place my other lead across every other pin until I get a beep Oh, and there we got a beep right there. So this pin right here is A08. If we look at the diagram, what does that say it is? So this is our pin right here, and this is going to be PWM6. So this is motor output number 6. And as long as you're using a quadcopter, you're only using motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. That means 6 is free. And this means one of two things. Either the pinout in the firmware is wrong or the pinout is correct someone actually did that on purpose because the circuitry on a board is messed up the chances of the pinout being wrong is very slim I would say it's only a 1 in 10 chance because they thoroughly test this firmware before they release it I'm not saying it doesn't happen because it does happen and then uh, in that case you could remap that pin back to where it's supposed to be but because I already know there's something wrong with the circuitry. Uh, I know for a fact that someone remapped that pin to uh, motor output number six because of the circuitry problem. And the reason they picked motor number six is because how many people are flying in hexacopters? Uh, it's very few. Now if you do ha have a hexacopter then yeah you could remap that pin to something else but then you'll lose functionality of something else. So uh, in this case, because I just use quadcopters, uh, motor number six is fine, so I will just use that. So let's try soldering this wire to where the LED pins are mapped in the firmware. Now let's plug in a USB cable and see what we get. And what do you know, the LEDs are working. Now the next thing I would do is Personally, I really don't like having to stretch my wires across the board with power and ground over here and then signal over here. You would want to find out if uh, your flight controller is, if say, you know, there's five volt pins here, supposedly, and all these pins here are ground. But will that work? Uh, I can already tell you, like I would try it out and test it, but I can already tell you it's not going to work, not on this board. So you kind of are forced to leave your uh, ground and 5 volt pins where they're supposed to be on the LED, uh, you know, power and ground pins. But that's going to do it, guys. Uh, that's just one example with LEDs. Uh, same thing is going to apply to buzzers and everything else. So that's how I diagnose it and figure out what's going on uh, using the uh, data sheets and pinouts and all that good stuff. So if this video helped you out, give me a like. Uh, thanks for watching. Check out the links I've left for you in the description below, and I will see you again soon.